Our presentation today is entitled Flee from Idolatry. Please note, we use the true names of our Creator, as there is power in His name. God and Lord are titles and is not His name. Yahuwah is our Heavenly Father. Jesus has no meaning. Yahusha means Yah is our salvation. Elohim means Mighty One or Mighty Ones. The real name of our Heavenly Father is Yahuwah. And that Bible translators admit to removing his name over 7,000 times from our Bibles and replaced it with the title Lord in capital letters and God. When you go to uh, Psalm 68.4, we find that it states, Yah is his name. And we also see that re reflected in Hallelujah, Yah. All texts are taken from the Scriptures Bible, 2009, unless otherwise noted. In 1 Corinthians 10.14, it states, these are the words of Paul, My dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. To flee is an urgent call to run, a call to leave. According to the dictionary, to flee means to run away from a place or situation of danger, to run to save your life, to hurry to a place of safety. The command issued by Paul to flee from idolatry must be a very serious matter in the eyes of our Creator and Savior. It sounds like an urgent call, a matter of life and death. Question. Why is it so important, why is it so urgent to flee from idolatry? Because idolatry is nothing but devil worship. See Revelation 9.20, 1 Corinthians 10.19-22, Exodus 20.46, and Psalms 106.34-41. My friends, we are dealing in this case with eternal life in joy and peace and happiness versing eternal damnation. Now remember, there is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. Here are the Creator's own words in Exodus 20 verse 5. For I, Yahuwah, your Elohim, am a jealous Elohim. And then Deuteronomy 4.24 For Yahuwah, your Elohim, is a consuming fire, a jealous Elohim. When most people think of jealousy, they think of a powerful human emotion that can do a great deal of harm unless harnessed and kept under control. Jealousy is not something that immediately comes to mind in connection with Yahuwah. He is saying that he tolerates no rivals because there is none. When we read about his covenant relationship with the nation of Israel 
and then see how it is ultimately fulfilled in his relationship with his final remnant peoples. We discover that his jealousy is an important theme and a necessary aspect of his majestic, holy, and loving character. The jealousy of Yahuwah, the Creator, the Life Giver, the only Savior, according to Isaiah 44, 6 and 44, 24, is His commitment to His honor, glory, and love that manifests itself in the salvation of His people and the just condemnation of all who stand in opposition to Him. Isaiah 43, 11. I, I am Yahuwah, and besides me there is no Savior. And my friend, no means no. Then we read in Isaiah 45, 18. I am Yahuwah, and there is none else. Question, what is idolatry? What does it look like? Most people today who have any concept of idolatry probably think of pagans bowing down and worshipping a strange-looking idol, a carved image or statue. That's part of what idolatry means, but most of us today don't do that. Idolatry is not just venerating a statue, carving or painting. Idolatry occurs when we begin to value anything more than we value the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. If we spend more time thinking about our hero than Elohim, our Creator, our Savior, our Father in Heaven, that is idolatry. If our every thought is about the latest gadget, or our personal appearance, that is idolatry. If the priority in our lives is our family and to please ourselves, even that is idolatry. When Yahuwah said, you shall have no other Elohim, no other gods before me, Exodus 23, he wasn't just talking about the imaginary deities that seem so ridiculous to us today. He was talking about anything that usurps his place as number one in our hearts. The solution to this problem is as simple and as difficult as Yahusha's admonition in Matthew 6.33. But seek you first the kingdom of Elohim and his righteousness. And all these other things shall be added unto you. Though everything else must come later. He is first. Because he is a life giver. Every breath that we breathe comes from him. In a few words, what is idolatry and what is an idol? Whatever divides the affections or takes away from the soul the supreme love of Yahuwah or interposes to prevent unlimited confidence and entire trust in Him alone assumes the character and takes the form of an idol. It is idolatry. So let's first begin with Deuteronomy 29:16 to 18 where Yahuwah says, For you know how we dwelt in the land of Mitzrayim in Egypt, and how we passed through the nations which you passed through. And you saw the abominations and the idols, wood and stone, silver and gold, which were with them. Lest there should be among you a man or a woman, or clan or tribe, whose heart turns away today from Yahuwah, our Elohim, 
to go and serve the mighty ones of these nations, the false gods. Let there be, lest there should be among you a root bearing bitterness or wormwood. Here the word wormwood is used, which uh, is la'ana, from an unused root means to curse, regarded as poisonous and therefore a cursed hemlock. As an example, the cross used by the Christians is pagan idolatry and has nothing to do whatsoever with the Hebrew Savior, Yahusha Messiah, that gave his life for us. Emperor Constantine introduced the pagan cross when he invented Christianity, which is a mixture of paganism and true faith. The cross and the X symbols, as in Christmas, both represent the sun and the zodiac, as does the circular communion wafer in the Catholic Church. Corresponding to Sumerian Yutu, this cross was identified with a sun god eight centuries before Yahusha and long before it was called the Maltese cross by the Knights of Malta. Alexander Hislop, The Two Babylons, pages 197-205, frankly calls the cross this pagan symbol, the Tau, the sign of the cross, the indisputable sign of Tammuz, the false messiah, the mystic Tau of the Chaldeans or Babylonians and Egyptians, the true original form of the letter T, the initial of the name of Tammuz, the Babylonian cross was the recognized emblem of Tammuz. I have that from the book, Come Out of Her, My People, C. J. Coster, page 30. The cross is an abomination. It is idolatry. In the Cyclopedia Britannica, 11th edition, volume 14, page 273, we read, In the Egyptian churches, the cross was a pagan symbol of life, borrowed by the Christians and interpreted in the pagan manner. This again from the book, Come Out of Here, My People, from C. G. Coster, page 30. That means the cross used by Christians is idolatry. Since we speak about the Christian cross, what about the Christian Messiah by the name of Jesus Christ that was nailed to a cross? When you do some research, you will discover that what Christianity practices is rooted in paganism and is serving strange gods. Christianity does not serve the Most High, Yahuwah, the scriptures speak of, and the one Abraham, Isaac, and Israel served. Neither do they follow Yahusha, the son, but a man-made Messiah called Jesus who was created by Constantine, who was a sun worshiper till his death. Now I know this is shocking and many people did not know that and they're ignorant, but now you know. Most people do not know that. We all have been, seen, been deceived. I had been deceived for 50 plus years, but it's time to wake up and repent because there is no salvation in the Greek Messiah called Jesus.
In Acts 4.12, it states, There is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. And that name is Yahusha. The Messiah that came down from heaven as a suffering servant and made atonement for you and for me and went back to heaven was born a Hebrew and spoke Hebrew. His name is Yahusha. He was Yahuwah in the flesh. He kept the weekly Sabbath, the yearly festivals, ate kosher and will come again, but this time as a king of kings and the master of masters. He will take his people home, cleanse this planet by fire, according to 2 Peter 3, 9-13, and recreate this planet to rule here for eternity with the redeemed. At that time, sin and sinners will be no more. The Greek Messiah JC is a copy, an image of Yahusha, but not Yahusha. This Greek Messiah was created by Constantine, as I mentioned, in the 3rd century for political reasons, with all the doctrines of demons that go with it, like Sunday, Christmas, Easter, Trinity, baby baptism, and many more. This name is a mask for Tammuz for Satan, and is a deceiver. Following this man-made Greek Messiah is called idolatry and vain worship. Now remember, Constantine is the one that created this Messiah, and he, he first called him Iesus, and about four to five hundred years ago, it was changed to Jesus. We are commanded not even to do what, according to Exodus 23.13? Let's read it. And in all things that I have said unto you, be circumspect, and make no mention of the name of other gods, neither let it be heard out of thy mouth. And the name of this Greek Messiah, called J.C., is a strange God. The uh, pagan Greek title Christos, used of all pagan Demi gods, after which Jesus Christ was fashioned by Constantine. Jesus Christ is shortened to XS, but this one monogram XS includes the symbol of the sea serpent mentioned in Revelation 13.1. Number in scripture. This is from Dr. E. W. Bollinger, page 49. The middle letter represents a symbol of the serpent and is intimately connected with the ancient Egyptian mysteries, the mystery of Babylon. So, the beast from the sea is a serpent or Satan. Should that concern questions? Another question, what about Christmas? Another form of idolatry. Question. On the right hand, we see the... Uh, golden calf apostasy, and on the left we see the Christmas tree. Can you see the difference? Neither can Yahuwah. Christmas is idolatry. What about Easter, another form of idolatry in Christianity?
The term Easter is derived from the name of an ancient pagan goddess, Eostri, Ostara, Ishtar, and has no relation whatsoever to the events surrounding Yahusha's death. That means it is 100% pagan, an abomination in the sight of heaven. There are many people in this world that practice idolatry. People of the Hindu religion have wooden and stone carvings and manifestation of the Elohims. Buddhists have Buddha statues, which they gave offerings. They even leave food for it and rub its belly for good luck. Hindus even have a special calf that they worship and even bow down to it. Idolatry is very much alive. And well. The sin of idolatry is clearly defined in Scripture. Leviticus 19.4 states, Do not turn to idols, and do not make for yourselves molded mighty ones. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. Leviticus 26.1 reads, do not make idols for yourselves, and do not set up a carved image or a pillar for yourself, and do not place a stone image in your land, to bow down to it, for I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. Exodus 23.5 states, You have no other mighty ones against my faith. You do not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of that which is in the heavens above, or which is in the earth beneath, or which is in the waters under the earth. For you do not bow down to them, nor serve them. For I, Yahuwah, you Elohim, am a jealous El, visiting the crookedness of the fathers on the children, to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. So as we had seen, even Christians are worshipping or serving another Elohim called Jesus Christ. We can make Elohims gods out of the work of our hands, we can all make our very own Elohim. We can make this Elohim to our own minds and make it say whatever we want, whatever we think we can do. However, these images profit nothing. They are teachers of lies that come from our own thoughts. Some people are so brainwashed by the pastor until they talk more about him than about Yahusha. Their pastor can do no wrong, and if he does, they are the first to defend him, no matter what he has done or believes. He could be a liar, or a believer of false teachings, or a perpetuator of carnal behavior. To them, it does not matter. That means their pastor becomes their idol, and that is idolatry. Some people think or feel that it is their duty to serve their denomination or church no matter what, even if the denomination is out of the will of Yahuwah and is teaching the doctrines and commandments of men. The loyalty they should have for the Messiah and to his teachings, his Torah, they have for their denomination. The Holy Spirit may give them all kinds of warnings and signs, but they are all being ignored. Their service is to their denomination because that is their God, that is their idol, and that is idolatry. Idolatry is a very serious sin. It attacks directly at Yahuwah's character. 
Once this character has been adulterated, we lose our guidelines for moral judgment and morality. It's now whatever we think, whatever we want it to be. If we don't have a true perspective of Yahuwah Elohim, then we are lost along with everything else. What does Yahuwah say about borrowing pagan symbols and holidays to worship Him? Syncretism means to attempt to be in union of diverse or opposite ideas. It is mixing things that are fundamentally different. From the very beginning, Yahuwah has not accepted synchronism. The central theme in holiness is separation, as it reads in Genesis 12.1. And Yahuwah said to Abraham, Go yourself out of your land, from your relatives, and from your father's house, to a land which I show you. My friends, there is no room for mix in Yahuwah's economy. His laws show this. According to Torah, bringing pagan forms of worship of Elohim is absolutely 100% prohibited. Yahuwah hates synchronism. It goes against his very essence. For in him is light and there is no darkness. Deuteronomy 18, 9 and 12 and chapter 20, 17 to 18, are among the verses that speak of not melting with pagan ideas and things. You cannot mix truth with error and be accepted by Yahuwah. When we allow the things of Satan to come in, we open the door to his demons, mixing things that are not of Elohim, deadens the soul. It takes the soul away from Yahuwah. It lulls it, soothes it. It is like the frog and the slowly heated water. By the time the water is boiling, it's too late. The frog is a goner. The nation of Israel continued going downhill as they increased in syncretism. After hundreds of years, Yahuwah finally punished them with exile. It's very sad that holidays such as Christmas and Easter have overshadowed the festivals which Yahuwah gave to his people. Christianity has lost great edification and instruction. Her Jewish and Torah roots we need to shine as lights in this dark world. The professed people of Yahuwah and the world celebrate Christmas together as though they are one. Now think about this. If you celebrate things that displease the Father, you commit idolatry which is an abomination in the sight of heaven. Romans 1, 21-23 says, Because that, when they knew Elohim, they glorified him not as Elohim, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible Elohim into an image made like the corruptible men, and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. We humans seem to want to make Yahuwah in our image. We want to bring Elohim down to be like what we want, turning Elohim into what we are. So let us stop humanizing the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. We are getting to the point of not seeing him as he truly is. 
Don't let Satan influence you because he is behind it. As I had mentioned in the beginning, idolatry is not just making an idol out of some material and bowing to it. It includes much more. In 1 John 5.10 it reads, The one who believes in the Son of Elohim has a witness in himself. The one who does not believe Elohim has made him a liar, because he has not believed the witness that Elohim has given concerning his son. As believers in Yahusha, how many of us panic over a problem, worry over it and do not trust Yahuwah for it? What we have just done is to doubt our Heavenly Father. By not believing in Him, we have made Him something different than what He said He is. This all is idolatry because we have just made Yahuwah less than what He is. Another thought on idolatry we find in Exodus 32-35. And all the people took off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. And he took this from their hand and he formed it with an engraving tool and made a molded calf. And they said, This is your mighty one. O Israel, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. And Aaron saw and built a slaughter ring place before it. And Aaron called out and said, Tomorrow is what? Tomorrow is a festival to Yahuwah. The golden calf was made to represent the true and living Elohim the Elohim who brought them out of Egypt, but they were worshipping him in the wrong way. There are many today who are also worshipping the true Elohim in the wrong way. Aaron may have thought that a golden calf would adequately represent the majesty and power of Yahuwah, but the resulting worship quickly degenerated into a debauched pagan festival so loud that Joshua thought war had been broken out. What was um, Elohim's response? The covenant was broken. The people were forced to drink the remains of the shattered idol and 3,000 worshippers were put to the sword and those who survived were struck with a plague. Yahuwah did not view their sin lightly, neither will he look at it lightly today, because he has not changed according to Malachi 3.6. Jeroboam revived the same idolatry for its own political purposes in a later age. Ahab would be the first king to introduce worship of false Elohim into the northern kingdom. The history of Baal, Baal worship, demonstrates the distinction between the first and second commandments, while subsequent events show that even idolatry related to the one true Elohim is an abomination or idolatry. King Ahab built the temple of Baal, and the author of the King James Version introduces this fact with the words, and it came to pass as if it had been a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam. 1 Kings 16.31 Baal, or Baal worship, was a whole new category of sin. But we should not imagine that it was a light thing to worship Yahuwah through an idol. Thus, Jehu destroyed Baal out of Israel. 
Howbeit from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin, Jehu departed not, and he continued to worship the golden calves. See 2 Kings 10, 28-29. Eventually, this sin was one of the causes of the destruction of the northern kingdom. See 2 Kings 17, 21-23. Romans 1, 23 reads, In fact, they have exchanged the glory of the immortal Elohim for mere images like a mortal human being, or like birds and animals or reptiles, their hearts were foolish and darkened. The wickedness of the heart clouds and darkens, it binds and perverts and corrupts. See Jeremiah 17:9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Romans 1:22 says, claiming to be wise, they have become fools. Now that we have a little better understanding of idolatry, let's look at us. I know that we don't physically make statues or pictures and bow to them, worshipping them. Does this mean that we don't make idols? So let's look at other forms of idolatry. In Deuteronomy 5.21, it says, You do not covet your neighbor's wife, nor do you desire your neighbor's house, his field, nor his male servant, nor his female servant, his ox, nor his donkey, or whatever belongs to your neighbor. Micah 2.2 2 reads, And they coveted fields and seized them, all the houses, and took them away. And they oppressed a man, and his house, a man and his inheritance. Covetousness is idolatry. Many don't realize how greed is impeding their spiritual growth and how necessary it is to overcome the deadly and deceitful sin of covetousness. Humanity has long been afflicted by the curse of covetousness. Yahushua warned the people of his day, and he said unto them, Take heed, and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consists not in the things, in the abundance of the things which he possesses. We cannot worship Yahuwah in the true way and be coveting or being greedy and selfish. Colossians 3, 5-6 says, Therefore put to death your members which are on the earth, whoring, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and greed of gain, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of Elohim is coming upon the sons of disobedience. And this can only happen when you're born again through water and the Spirit in the name of Yahusha. It doesn't matter if it's the gods of Egypt or money or anything else. Whatever that idol is, it has a defining effect and you must flee from it. A person who worships an idol will tend to tear down all who are around him. In Ezekiel 36.18 it reads, So I poured out my wrath on them for the blood they had shed on the land, and for the idols they defiled it. Man was created to worship. If he doesn't worship Yahuwah, the one who created man, the one who stains him, he will worship something else.
every person on earth does worship. Sad to say, we don't all worship the creator of heaven, but we all worship someone or something. It may be a sports figure, an entertainer, or someone else. It may be a possession, but everyone bows at some kind of altar. But if you are not worshiping the true and living creator, then you will worship something of your own composition and of some other false god. Even atheists worship, skeptics worship, republicans and democrats worship, independents worship, everyone everywhere worships. It is a fundamental drive of life and one of the unique distinctions of humanity. I repeat, if you are not worshipping the true and living Creator, then you will worship something of your own composition, called an idol. However, an idol cannot help you in any way. You cannot turn to your money or your big house or your luxury car. They want nor can they, want, nor can they help you. They cannot speak. They cannot give you advice in times of tribulations. They are just there giving no help at all. People may put their treasure in the things of this world and in the cares of this world. As stated, they may find the value in fancy cars, fancy houses, nice toys, and the like, yet they must protect and preserve these items. So how can we submit ourselves to these things that cannot help or save us? Yes, we need a place to live. We need transportation, a dependable vehicle to get around. But we must not make these things our idols. We must be good stewards and take good care of our homes, cars and other belongings, but not worship them. We must first seek the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. Trust him, the everlasting Father, the King of Kings, the Master of Masters, that give us our breaths. He is the only one that can and will help us if we trust him. Consider another idol, the idol of sex. People are giving themselves into pornography, sex before marriage, promiscuity, adultery, homosexuality, and the like. They are looking for true joy, pleasure, and escape. But the problem is the same. If it depends on you, then it cannot give you what you are looking for. The moment ends, and now you are back to the same position what you were before. You are no better off for all your work and waste of time. If you must protect it, then it is not to be depended on. If you must save it, then it is not worth your life pursuit. If you must help it, then you should not treasure it. People make vain and false imaginations of Yahuwah. They make Elohim whatever they please. They govern themselves by their own minds, teachers of lies. They make Yahuwah and scriptures to mean whatever they want. They have dumb idols. We have the living Elohim, Yahuwah, the Creator and Savior. We have access to Him, not by our own inventions, by, by what he has instituted. Isaiah 65, 2 reads, I, Yahuwah, have held out my hands all day long to a stubborn people who walk in a way that is not good after their own thoughts. He spreads out his hands to embrace them to accept them. When Yahushua was crucified, his hands were spread out and stretched as if he was preparing to receive us sinners, 
receive us under his bosom. He was waiting, and he was not weary of waiting. Joshua 23, 7-8 reads, So as not to go in among these nations, these who remain among you, and make no mention of the name of their mighty ones, of their false gods, nor swear by them, nor serve them, nor bow down to them, but cling to Yahuwah, your Elohim, as you have done to this day. My friends, idolatry is demonic and offensive to our Elohim. We are not even to mention their names. Let us remember that an idol does not have to be something that we have fashioned with our hands, but it can also be fashioned by our hearts. Ezekiel 14, 3-4 reads, Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their hearts and have put the stumbling block of their crookedness before their face. Should I let them inquire of me at all? Therefore speak to them, and you shall say to them, Thus saith the Master, Yahuwah, Every one of the house of Israel who sets up his idols in his heart and puts the stumbling block of his crookedness before his face, and shall come to the prophet, a Yahuwah shall answer him who comes, according to his many idols. Beware of idolatry in any shape or form. Flee from it. One day, each of us will stand before our king in judgment. We will be standing before him alone, not able to blame our wife, our husband, or mother, our father, or sister, or brother, or anyone. Will we stand there with a life full of idolatry, or will we stand before him with a life full of good deeds? If anyone here today does not know the Master Yahusha, Repent of your sins, throw out your idols, follow Yahusha, for the kingdom of heaven is now. Another form of idol worship that we mold and make is not with hands, but with our wicked and evil hearts. When we take our eyes off of Yahuwah, and put them on ourselves. We have just made a new idols, ourselves. We comfort ourselves in vain. We become of ourselves false Elohims, thus losing favor with the true and living Elohim. We go our own way, and because of it, we are not in a fold. We are scattered from each other and from Yahuwah Elohim. Then we have no shepherd, no one to rule us, no one to guide and lead us, no priest to intercede for us, no one to take care of us and keep us together. The only truth we say we have is in ourselves and comes from our small and puny minds. It is not the truth, it is lies. It is deception. We are polluting ourselves. We are dumb idols with no understanding. Let us not take Elohim's throne out of our hearts and replace it with ourselves or any idol. The living Elohim, the true Elohim, the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, is the one who made us, who sent his son Yahusha to redeem us. He pardoned our sins and gave us eternal life. So let us cleave again, I say, let us cleave to him in faith, love and obedience. Let us not separate our minds and hearts from the only Elohim. Jeremiah 17, 5-6 reads, 
Thus saith Yahuwah, Cursed be the man that trusts a man, and makes flesh his arm, and whose heart it parteth from Yahuwah. For he shall be like the heath in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land, and not inhabit it. So take heed, do not trust in man, whoever he or she is. When it comes to where we will place our trust, there are basically only two choices, man or Yahuwah. This choice is a critical one because one is a curse and the other is a blessing. As we were just reading in Jeremiah, cursed is a man who trusts in man. Blessed is a man who trusts in Yahuwah. The curse that results from depending on human resources, ours or others, it doesn't matter, is barrenness of life, spiritually speaking, for he shall be like a shrub in the desert. A desert shrub represents the antithesis of abundant spiritual life. It's a picture of a plant that is barely surviving. Desert shrubs are typically sparse in growth and lacking in fruitfulness, a person who trusts in flesh is like this shop. In Psalms 27 it says, Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of Yahuwah, Elohim. A couple of questions to think about. Are we idolatrous in any way? Are there other pictures in our hearts that are next to or even in front of Yahuwah? What is in our lives that would take us away from an obedient walk with Him? If there is, then pick it up and throw it away. Commit to making Yahuwah the only Elohim you serve. Remember, Yahusha is the master of all. Let's be reminded, idolatry is nothing but devil worship. Flee from it. Let's not forget who our maker is. Let us build in us his temple. In this day, it's easy to build idols in our hearts and turn from Yahuwah. Let us not turn our eyes from him, making idols in our hearts, because idolatry is nothing but devil's worship. Let's choose him, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Please give us a thumbs up if you agree with this message. Shalom. Let's remember Supreme Provider is Yahusha Hamashir. This message was prepared and narrated, narrated by myself. You can reach me at uh, Malachi 4.4 at Reagan.com. You also can go to my website, thefigtreegeneration.net and find many more messages which you can either read or watch.